kind of challenges does Florida State? They press a lot more, a lot more than maybe what you've seen. And, and big guys, what what kind of challenges do you see they pose? Yeah, I mean they're um, you know no, notorious for blocking shots and turning teams over. And um, you know faces have changed, but their philosophy and the way they do things hasn't. Uh, it's a big challenge. You know, it's been interesting because I think earlier in the season they were. Uh, way more extended in passing lanes. The last couple games, not as much. Um, but we're going to prepare as if they're way out in the passing lanes and getting extended because um, we don't see that every day. But, uh, yeah, that's who they've been for a long time. They've been really successful at it. Mason was just mentioning, you know, 7-4 guy. Um, obviously, you guys got some practice against Western Kentucky. Um, and you've seen some other shot blockers. Too. What, what, what do you hope you guys have taken from those experiences that you maybe can apply? Well, it's a little different. Um, you know, they, uh, they, they play a completely different style defensively. Um, Western's five-man played, you know, 30-plus minutes a game where, um, you know, Florida State's aren't, aren't as much. They played Malik Osborne uh, mostly at the five. But, you know, for us, it's, it's about – having purpose on offense, whether they're man or zone, Florida State will be virtually all switching man to man and just understanding how can we be successful uh, and understanding that in the course of the game pressure and denying. And uh, so that's what we've been preparing here for a couple of days, being strong with our decision making, uh, not having shots hurried or rushed or blocked around the basket. That's a big challenge for our team. They've got height, they're bigger, but they shoot. I think they've got six guys that have made 12 or more threes. Is that, and, and that's kind of how they've been recently. Yeah, yeah they've been a team that um, has no hesitation shooting threes. You know, and sometimes that, you know, as, as a coach can be a good thing. You know, if they're missing them and they're not necessarily taking time off the, off the clock and, and having quicker possessions. But, you know, we have to challenge their shots. Uh, discourage them from getting second shots, keep them off the glass. They're big, they're long. Uh, so, again, Florida State presents a lot of challenges, and, and offensively, uh, they certainly shoot the three a lot. Obviously, Florida State isn't having the type of season that we've known the last couple of years under Leonard, Leonard Hamilton, and the ACC as a whole is a little bit down. How critical is this game knowing that the opportunity for quote-unquote quality wins is kind of few and far between right yeah, now in the I ACC? Don't, we only worry about – being at our best on Saturday. You know, there's always going to be storylines around the game. Um, you know, and they're, they're probably rightful storylines, but, you know, our guys have to be concerned with the details of, of preparing, of how to win, and being able to execute that in a tough environment. So, uh, you know, all the stakes that are tied to any one game, um, you know, we're all aware of them, but it doesn't change what we do in terms of our preparation. But uh, we've got to be ready. They're a team that's come off a loss, uh, a humbling loss at Wake Forest. We know they're going to be a much different team in terms of their intensity. And we've got to meet that challenge minute one at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Chris, coming out of Western, there was a time – after the Western game, I think Noah said there was a time when you guys couldn't even really tell what they were in. He was having a hard time with that stuff. You, now you've played Georgia Tech, which switches their defense quite a bit. Pitt plays such a weird zone at one point that it looks like four guys are lined up out front. Are you guys getting better at kind of recognizing what you're facing and figuring out what you need to do with it? Way better. And I don't know if, if, if he was sort of misunderstood, um, but what wasn't executed against Western was, was having a purpose of where are we trying to go with what they're doing. And, you know, our team has, has gotten way better at that over the course of two weeks. And so, um, you know, it's, it's being clear with our players and it's, it's holding them to the standard of doing what's been explained. Uh, and I think our guys have really um, – They've improved greatly in that area when we face them. And we, you know, again, we face two teams that switched it up a lot during the course of the game and has, um, you know, zones that aren't everyday standard regular basic zones. And so I'm really happy and pleased in that standpoint. I believe it was after the DePaul game that you said you wanted your team to get a lot more touches down low in the paint. And it seems like in the last five or so games since the offense is starting to get a lot better shooting wise, getting, getting to the free throw line, et cetera. How pleased are you with some of the progression you've seen on the offensive end now, knowing that they're starting to make a con more concerted effort getting to the paint? I mean, it's everything for our team. You know, we're not going to beat anybody shooting 35, 40 threes and, and going to the free throw line three or four times. And, um, you know, the recognition to accept that has been, has been great. It's been everything you want as a coach. Um, doesn't make it any easier. You know, we're going to have 
the challenge of physicality and athleticism like we haven't seen all year in Florida State. But, you know, when our team gets to the free throw line and does it early in the half, the game becomes way different. And uh, sometimes it's easier said than done because teams are playing zone. They're not as aggressive. But at the same time, we have to figure, figure out a way to live in the lane, get back cuts. And then, again, we're going to get some open three-point looks because of that pressure we're putting on the rim. Quick follow-up, kind of based on the physicality part, knowing that you guys just played Pitt, who, as we know, is probably one of the more physical yep. teams in the league. How much do you think that helps you following that immediately up with Florida State? Yeah, it's good prep. You know, it's good prep. We saw teams that uh, – or a team in Pitt – that had really good length almost at every position. Uh, maybe not necessarily at the five, but he was certainly their best player and played like it in the second half. So yeah, I think it's it's you know it's very good prep. It beats playing an NAI team, you know, uh, preparing for FSU. Chris um, Mason was just in here, and obviously he's he's adjusting to a different level. He's adjusting to he's coming off an injury. He's had some COVID. He's a father. Uh, do you have an appreciation of what it's taken for him to just kind of find his way here? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's he's a guy that wanted to play at Louisville. He wanted to be a part of our program, and uh, you know, he's an in-state kid. Uh, hasn't been easy for him the last you know couple of years because he was dealing with um, a really bad ankle injury at Western Carolina that he sort of played through. Uh, then he had surgery on it, and uh, again, everything that, that's that's happened with the, the sit out and COVID and everything, and uh, he didn't really have a preseason. So the thing that hasn't been stripped from him is his confidence. Uh, his in in big game moments, and so I'm glad that we have him back for a few more days prior to Florida State, where he didn't even get a practice in before we played last game. He talked about that confidence, maybe wavering a little bit, but having having to kind of get it back because I'm sure you have to just sort of yeah. do it to get it done. Have you have you seen a change in him lately? Yeah, I mean, I think in the beginning of the year, uh, when he was first able to practice, uh, you'd see him wincing on the side, and and it was. Again, I don't think it was confidence in his basketball ability so much as confidence in moving and, and his quickness uh, and things like that, where you get to the point where Malik's gotten, where he doesn't even think about it. And I think, I think Mason's getting to that point if he's not already arrived. Chris, earlier in the season when Noah was struggling from the field, there was a lot said about you know how to fix a, a shooter's struggles. And he's kind of quietly brought himself out of that, made, has made multiple big shots. Has he changed anything, or is that just the mentality of a shooter to keep shooting? You'd probably have to ask him when it comes to the mechanic mechanics part. Um, I think he's taking better shots. You know, I don't think he's in, in search and in hunt for a shot. And I think, again, the way our team was playing earlier in the year, we were just taking the, the first quick shot we could find. It's not a recipe to win. And, um, you know, I think because of that, he's passed up some, some opportunities that, that um, you know, he was taking in the beginning of the year that to me seemed rushed. And, uh, you know, once you see a couple go in, I think even when you take a rush one now and then, uh, it makes it a lot easier. But by and large, I think he's taking really good threes. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thanks.